Network Dojo. A2.1X WLANs are definitely the more prominent WLANs that you'll be running into in the autonomous world, so it's definitely the one that we want to put in the most effort in terms of understanding how to troubleshoot. It's also the one that has the most to it, for sure. So as we kind of frame the conversation here, we're going to start with the assumption that your client can see an attempt to connect to the SSID. And so we'll focus on that um, getting connected, getting authenticated process here. So anytime there's AO2.1x going on, my first step is always looking at the radius server um, logs or statistics, just depending on wh whether we're talking about ICE or uh, local authentication on the APs here. Do you see anything at all? You know, any logs in ICE, any statistics, you know, numbers counting up at all? Um, on ICE, if you do get logs, we're going to analyze any errors for clues on the local radius configuration. We're going to see which stats are actually increasing their numbers as you know the attempts keep on racking up here so we'll, we'll, we'll be talking about what to look for for all those scenarios so one of the very common things is that you know what we don't get any auth logs at all or the statistics aren't uh, showing up at all on the local radius server one of the big causes for this is a broken recursion process that links the ssid ultimately to the radius server and so when in doubt, just re-enter these commands. I've, I've had in the past where, um, you know, there's a number of freeform fields that we type in here where if uh, spaces get thrown in at the end, um, sometimes it's caused problems. You know, I haven't really noticed that so much um, in the current version of the code, but then again, I, I don't really try to do it intentionally very often. Uh, but, you know, something to, to think about. We can run into problems where the, the radius server configuration is using the wrong IP address or the wrong port. So either it's not sending it to uh, the server or sending it to the server on ports that it's not listening on. We can have uh, communications issues. This is more with ICE, so maybe the, the autonomous AP can't actually talk to the ICE server due to uh, routing, switching, bad default gateways, you know, things like that. We could have um, non-radius filters happening first and failing so things like the global association filter if that's turned on that happens before the AO2.1x process happens or if we're doing MAC authentications MAC authentications happen prior to the AO2.1x authentications um, if those are preventing the conversations from happening we won't see the the logs after that and then um, we can run into things like, uh, at least on the AP here, local radius, if it's not allowing the authentication protocol, for whatever reason, we actually don't see logs surrounding that. But that's, a, that's specifically a local uh, auth scenario. So let's kind of look through some of these first, and then we'll talk about troubleshooting um, you know, when ICE is, is the scenario here. Okay, so the first thing is that recursion. And, and I guess, um, you know, we're talking about we're not seeing any auth logs or, or local radius stats. What, what am I talking about with local radius stats? Show radius local server statistics. We're not seeing any numbers in here. So all these are usually like zeros across the board. Or potentially there might be a, a few non-zero numbers, but nothing's incrementing. Normally as, as the, the device that's trying to connect to the WLAN is trying over and over and over again, some number is going up. And so if we're seeing all zeros or just nothing is changing, I usually assume, okay, we're, we're not actually involving the radius server here. So that's the, what I'm talking about looking locally. Again, on ICE, you're just not seeing any logs populating in the radius live logs. So recursion is a very important process because there's, there's a number of steps and it's very easy for them to, to use this to break your authentications. And again, um, don't expect that you're just gonna be able to configure this from scratch. With Atomos, this usually has a ton of pre-config and you're just going in and fixing what's wrong. So you, you almost never get the luxury of configuring this from scratch. So the command I run here, show run section, triple A, radius, SSID. This is gonna give me pretty much everything that I need. Now I've got a little extra junk in here, um, so we'll try to focus in on what I want. But I always start at the SSID level. So my, my only uh, AO2.1x style SSID is actually this one right here. So I'm going to key in on this authentication open EAP command. I'm also able to see, okay, is MAC filtering turned on? If it is and it doesn't need to be on, I'll take that part out. So we'll assume that you would spot that right away. Um, but what this is calling, this is calling a method list, a AAA authentication login method list. And so that's our first step in the recursion. 
the, the SSID calls the method list here. So this AP1 here is calling out this AP1 here. And it has to be a login, authentication login method list. Method list. If it's any other type of method list, that's a problem too. So uh, AAA authentication login method list with the same name. Okay, that's the first step in the recursion. Next step in the recursion, this pretty much always is going to call out a server group. So this group AP1 is referencing a AAA group server radius command, uh, also named AP1. So this AP1 here much, must match this AP1 right here. That's the second step in the recursion. Third step in the recursion, the server group is going to have a server, usually it's server name, but it could be a server host, uh, or basically a server IP address after that, because there's two ways to call that out. But in this case, it's the server name. So we're looking for uh, a server, a radius server, using a named method, in this case, named AP1. So down here, we would be looking at this command here. So if it says radius server name AP1, we're looking for a radius server space AP1 command right here. And that's the next step in the recursion. And then finally, the server is going to have the IP address and the ports involved. And so the IP address needs to be correct. The ports need to be correct. If any one of those things has a mistake in it, we don't actually engage the radius server and thus we would never see any logs in the radius server. So because of there's these multiple hops of recursion, again, very easy for them to use this as a method to cause troubleshooting with an AF2.1x authentication. So get very good at you know, working through this process here. Now, what if uh, they decide that, you know, we're not going to use a radius space server name. We're going to use radius dash server host to define the radius server. That's okay. It's just that we call that out differently in the server group. So if I was going to call this out in a server group, I would go into the group here. And then we say server, the IP address in question. And then we have to call out, we have to match the ports. Because we're not, under here, when we say, you know, for instance, auth, 1812, accounting, 1813, we're not saying, oh, well, when we use this server, we should use these ports. No. What we're trying to match is we're trying to match an already configured radius server that's configured globally on this AP. And when we match it using this method, we have to match by both IP and ports. So... In order to match this command here, that's 10.0.1.5 with auth 1812, accounting 1813, I have to call it those three pieces of information. Now, if I instead just said something like this, server 10.0.1.5, enter, it's going to assume port 1645, 1646, which I don't have a server of that IP address in those ports configured, hence the recursion breaks. So, if they are using this method to define the radius server host, Make sure that as you define it under the server group, you don't forget to call out those ports. And then the recursion will complete. So, recursion, very important to be able to step through that. And here's where I, where I mentioned I have in the past, um, if you notice that a number of these fields have freeform fields at the end, so like, you know, here's a freeform field, freeform field, freeform field, freeform field. Um, freeform field. I have seen where some, uh, where it, like if a space gets added to the end, you know, and usually what happens is you, know, you, you type in the command, you type in the field, space, question mark, is there any more? No, enter. So you have that, that space at the end. Sometimes that space actually becomes a part of the name you're trying to recurse. And if you're recursing to uh, basically this, the, the entity that doesn't have a space at the end, that can cause problems. So again, I haven't had to do this in a long time, but I have seen in the past where you know what, if everything looks completely valid and I can't really figure out what's going on, I will just re-enter things, you know, these, these texts with the freeform fields, just re-enter them, just making sure that I don't put a space at the end of any of them. And I have had a, a few instances in the past where this actually has fixed things. Okay, uh, so that's recursion. Uh, radius server with the wrong IP ports. Now, I would say, unless you're told otherwise, always use 18.12 for auth and 18.13 for accounting. Now, uh, the ICE server listens on both these ports as well as the legacy ports of 16.45, 16.46, if it's configured at its default. So if that's the case, okay, fine. ICE, we can use either sets of ports. But if we're doing local radius, 
the local radius engine on the Atomos APs only listen on port 1812 for authentication. It doesn't support accounting, so it doesn't really matter what you say for accounting. But for authentication, we have to use port 1812. We cannot use port 1645 for local radius. Otherwise, the, the local radius engine will never receive the request, hence you'll never get a log. So that's another reason why you wouldn't see a log. Bad IP or bad ports called out. Uh, communications issues. If there's communications issues, um, that's basically layer three troubleshooting for the most part. ACLs could potentially break things as well. You know, just make sure that your sweat, your your AP does have a default gateway configured and that's correct. Your BVI is up, IP'd appropriately. Outside of that, the issue should most likely be on the switch side of things. Uh, non radius filters happening first. So we already saw, you know, saw, you know, based off of the recursion lookup, we would immediately see if Mac authentication was turned on. But, um, you know, we, we talked about how to look for global association filters, looking for any ACLs that are configured. Those can always cause problems. You know, show run, include, you know, access, access lists, whatever you want to look for. Make sure that we're not using anything like that. And then finally, if we are doing local radius, if we turn off, the any of the, the protocol that we would need to use, which is usually eFast protocol. Uh, so if you saw a command in here, no authentication fast or no authentication leap. Um, that would let you know that those protocols have been turned off. For whatever reason, when someone tries to authenticate with the protocol has been disabled, it uh, we, we don't see any statistics of any kind in the local radius server statistics. Um, so that's another reason why statistics would not be showing up. So look at that local radio server. Make sure that there's nothing uh, turned off from an authentication protocol standpoint. All right. Uh, ICE issues. We'll, we'll talk about actually troubleshooting wrong configs on ICE in the ICE series of video. So we're not going to focus on, okay, you know, what do you look, need to look for in ICE to make sure that uh, when you see this error, this is what you do. Um, the, the AP authentications will hit the default authentication rule by, by default. Um, not that that's usually a, a problem. So there, there's three rules in there by default in the ICE. There's the, the MAB rule, the dot one X rule, and the default rule. The thing is the dot one X rule and the default rule are configured identically. So it's really irrelevant whether it hits the dot one X rule or the default rule. Uh, the things that can go wrong would go wrong regardless of which one of those rules that you hit. Um, so I really, I honestly wouldn't worry about that one. Mac authentications um, would also hit the default rule. So do know that if, if you did turn Mac authentications on, it would not hit the MAB rule. It's going to hit the default rule. Plan accordingly. There's no way around this that I'm aware of. Um, other things that can kind of go wrong with ICE, if you ever need to support a VLAN override from ICE, that can be done. Now, this is a really corner case type of thing. Just be sure that um, you need to define encryption for all VLANs that the override could place you onto. So normally, let's say that the WLAN is naturally on VLAN 111. So we would go under our radio, say encryption, VLAN 111, mode cipher is AES. And, and that's all we would worry about. So let's say I wanted to support a VLAN override to VLAN 112. In order to support that, I would additionally have to say under the radio, encapsulation VLAN 112 mode ciphers AES. And as long as you have that, the VLAN override should work. Um, also, if you need to support learning of a session timeout from a AAA override, be it from an ICE server, or actually technically a local radius uh, can do that too, you need an extra command in there. Uh, I'll just call it out right here. It's dot one X timer, timeout, reauth period, server. Uh, once you put that in, we would accept AAA overrides of session timeouts. But these last couple of things are really not common things that they're going to ask you to do. Mostly it's, it's just troubleshooting the authentication once it actually does legitimately trigger in ICE. Finally, local radius server troubleshooting. So let's say that we actually are starting to get some stats populating in the local radius server. So what can we be you know, doing? or I guess some of these even would, would apply to if that's not happening. So um, look at the local radius stats. You know, we, we looked at those and we saw how there's all those different uh, fields in there. For, don't forget, we have to use port 1812. 
Make sure that the, the NAS, the network device, is added with the matching shared key. Make sure your authentic creation protocol is enabled. Make sure your username and password is defined correctly. And if there's ever a doubt, things like passwords, shared keys, they're hashed out when you look at the running config so you can't actually know, you know what the shared key actually was, what the password actually was typed into the AP. Uh, just re-enter them if you're not sure. That way you know that they're correct. So again, as we're looking at this local radius server configuration here, here we go. So in order for, and this is a radius server, so in order for a radius server to allow someone to use it, we have to add a network device. So basically uh, for local radius, the NAS is the BVI address of the local AP. And whatever you specify for the shared key here should be the same as what we specify down here when we say that we want to use ourselves as a radius server. So we kind of wear, wear those two hats. We're the authenticator and the authentication server in the AO2.1x hierarchy. And so, uh, you know, pre-shared keys must match. And, and like I say, you're coming into this already pre-configured. We we, unless these values are actually legitimately number for number the same, <sighs> fly, uh, we don't know if it's the same or not. So the safest thing to do would just be to re-enter this and this together. Now we know that they're identical. Or um, the user accounts. Again, we, we have no idea what this user, this password is because we didn't type in this password usually. And so if we're unsure as to whether this is right or not, just re-enter it with the password that it should be, and now you know that it's correct. So don't be afraid to do those types of things because there's no sense in, in going super far with things and getting super detailed with things if you haven't done that. Obviously, if you've not found the issue up until that point, always be suspicious of any hashed out values uh, that you did not put in there. And as long as you have that, as long as the, the client is configured correctly, so if it's a Windows 7 PC connecting to that, the client will always be configured correctly. Or if it's uh, like a non-RIP bridge, a work group bridge associating up using these, um, you might need to you know, fix some stuff over there, but we'll talk about that in a separate video here. So again, uh, show radius, let's get out of here, show radius, local server statistics. What, you know, what numbers incrementing, once you get numbers incrementing, those can really give you a good clue. You know, is it an unknown username? Well, maybe the, you didn't type in the username correctly or you forgot to create the username. Bad password, obviously bad password. You might see things like uh, shared key mismatch if the pre-shared keys aren't matching up with each other. So look at what's in incrementing and use that as your guide. Okay, it's probably something somewhat related to these things and you can sort of look there first. But again, if it's not there, there's not massive amounts of config that you need to look through. Make sure everything in the local radio server config looks good. You know, be checking out those global configurations, look at the client, and you should hopefully find uh, what the issue is gonna be.